So you've been looking for a home for years in Southwest Florida or really anywhere in the United States. And you haven't bought a home yet. Six months, a year ago, two years ago, three years ago, some people four or five years ago. I've been talking to clients four, five, six years, and they keep telling me that they're not buying yet. They're not buying yet. They're waiting for the market to crash, waiting for the market to crash. So let's talk about why hasn't the market crashed yet? People keep hearing, they talk about it on the news saying the market's going to crash. Some of the, some of the economists, some of the, the real estate gurus keep saying the market's going to crash. Don't buy anything. Wait for it to crash. Wait for it to crash. Well, number one, you're trying to predict tops and bottoms. That never works. Ask anybody who's made any money in the stock market, unless they got really lucky, but if they make it long-term, they're not trying to predict tops and bottoms. That's not how you do it. But let's talk about why hasn't it crashed yet? Why hasn't it crashed again? So my number one question to those people is always, what is it that makes you think that this is going to happen? What makes you think that the market's going to crash? Is there anything specific besides you've heard some people say that it's going to crash that are supposed experts? If you do have a legitimate reason as to why you think it's going to crash, when do you expect it to crash? And how confident are you in that? Because if you don't know the answer, and I don't know, my crystal ball's broken. I've never been able to get it to tell me for sure when the top of the market is or when the bottom of the market is. It just doesn't work like that. Most people's answer to what makes you think it's going to happen, the majority of what I hear is has something to do with affordability. Something along the lines of prices can't keep going higher at the crazy rate that they are, especially with interest rates where they are now. True. You're right. 100%. Can't go on like that forever. But they can continue to go on like that in some form or another, maybe not at the crazy increases that we've seen, but they can continue to increase forever, or at least until the people buying homes run out of money or decide that they're not going to buy anymore. So far, that hasn't happened. Like I said, I've had people telling me this for the last four, five, six years. A lot of people, a lot of really smart people that have made a lot of money in real estate over the years. The other thing that could potentially cause something like that to happen would be something major economically happens. Uh, something like the Fed drastically raising interest rates in a short period of time. Well, that's kind of happened already, right? Over the last 12 to 18 months, mortgage rates have gone up from 2.5% to over 7%. The Fed has raised their, their Fed fund rate from 0 to 5.5% which that Fed fund rate doesn't directly impact mortgage interest rates because they're not tied directly to it, but it does indirectly affect them. What it has done so far, at least now at this point this year, I mean, it didn't for the first roughly nine, 12 months that they were doing it, didn't really have a major impact on it. But now that we're up into that six and a half, seven percent range and set even seven and a quarter, seven and a half now, is uh, it has pretty much flattened out the appreciation, at least in Southwest Florida, in our markets. It's We're still seeing appreciation year over year, uh, but it's not nearly as significant of jumps as we have seen. Uh, and I'll show you some charts so that you can see. Uh, put, put some numbers together to show you kind of increases from all the way back from 2018 moving forward through 2022. You can see the annual appreciation um, and then I'll show you some monthly charts as well that uh, that are plugged in here that you'll be able to see for the different markets that we cover to show that prices are still increasing just at a much, much slower rate. And the projections that I've seen, depending on who it is that you ask, but the projections from all the different companies showing the statistics and and uh, that collect all the data and, and analyze these things is that we're still expecting somewhere between 3 and 7% appreciation here in Southwest Florida throughout the rest of this year. And I expect that's probably going to continue into early next year as well. 
I think what we're going to likely see is it be fairly flat, but a, maybe, you know, a little bit of appreciation, which is I've been saying this for a while. I think that appreciation was going to slow way down, but that we will probably not in most areas go negative. Now, as we get into uh, starting to talk uh, about the next election, uh, with all of that starting to ramp up and, uh, you know, we're about to have uh, the first debates and that sort of thing, uh, I think the election is going to play a role in what's going to happen. I don't know for sure because I, I don't, I don't know what they're planning, but it is very common for whoever is in office to use whatever powers they have to try to do things to make people like them more right before an electric uh, an election. So what does that mean? Well, there's the potential that the Fed's going to continue raising rates at a slower pace because inflation has come down but it's still not at the 2% target that they're hoping for. And the job market has stayed very persistently, extremely strong. The economy's strong, inflation's down, jobs are good, at least according to all the statistics that, that they put out there. So I think they're going to continue to raise the Fed rate a little bit more over the next couple, you know, the next six months to a year. But then what I expect is likely right bef- as we get closer into the election time, uh, I think that there's a good possibility that we see the Fed lower rates again. Why? Because all of a sudden that will make housing more affordable. Well, kind of. Interest rates will make it more affordable. But if interest rates go down, if they, I mean, the reason a lot of people aren't buying right now, you know, obviously you got supply and demand is a big part of why prices stay where they are. Supply is very low. Even though demand has gone down, supply has also gone down. So that has kept prices up. Part of the reason that is, is because interest rates have gone up drastically. So anybody that already owns a home is most people are locked in somewhere between two and a half and 4%. Virtually everybody is below a 5% interest rate right now on their mortgage. So what has happened is the people that already own homes do not want to put their home on the market and sell them because they've got such a good interest rate. If they buy a new home, even the exact same home, if they could buy the same home for the same price that they're selling it for, their payment's going to be drastically higher because their interest rate's higher than what they're locked in at now. So the same home would cost them significantly more per month. So obviously, the only way they're going to get a similar payment would be to buy less home at the higher interest rate and quite a bit less home. So it works if you're downsizing, maybe. But if you are trying to go up or stay the same in a different area, if it's a, if that different area is similarly priced, you're paying more. And so a lot of people just aren't moving. A lot of people aren't selling their homes, which means inventory is low. So with inventory low, like I said, even though the buyer demand has dropped pretty significantly, the inventory has also dropped significantly. And so things stay balanced kind of where they're at. So... What happens if the Fed drops their rate and mortgage rates go down? If mortgage rates get back down to like somewhere between four and a half and five and a half percent, I think we see a drastic increase in demand. Also, a significant increase in supply because some of those people are going to jump. It's going to get to the point where, okay, now it makes sense to make a move. It will also significantly increase affordability for people who are first time buyers who don't currently own a home, which then increases the demand without increasing the supply. What happens when that happens? We go back to where we were a year ago, two years ago, 2021, 2022. We go back to that. And now we're crazy price increases, crazy competition, Possibly even stronger competition. I don't know if it can get stronger than 30, 40, 50 offers on a property. But I think likely what happens is if the Fed decides to do that, we see a huge spike in demand and we see property values shoot up again. I don't see anything indicating that they're going down. There's still such a ton of pent up demand. Many people out there want to buy. And they can't right now because they can't justify 
the payment that they would have to pay to get to the rate that they're at. So to answer the question, why hasn't happened yet? It's supply and demand. Demand has dropped. Supply has dropped along with it, which has allowed prices to stay and even slightly increase. So if you are one of those people sitting on the sideline waiting for the crash, don't hold your breath. Hopefully you haven't been holding it the last three, four, five years. But I wouldn't hold my breath for it. Might it happen? Maybe. Like I said, I don't have a crystal ball. But I don't think so. I think it's more likely to go the other way than it is to go. It, I think there's much more likelihood that it goes up than it goes down than it, you know, in a significant movement. So if you can afford to buy what you want now, I would suggest buy it now. And hopefully those rates come down, because if you buy it now, you don't have the competition. The market's fairly calm right now because it's pretty flat and balanced. There's not a ton of competition on every property in our market right now. So if you're looking in Southwest Florida, I would say jump on it. You're not competing with a ton of other people. There's properties available. They've been sitting on the market a little bit longer than they used to. Maybe even a little room for negotiation. Take advantage. Buy it now. Bite the bullet on the higher interest rate. Like I said, as long as you can afford it, don't buy something that you don't feel you can afford. But if you can buy the house that you want, if you feel you can afford it now, buy it now. Stop waiting. Get it. And then if those interest rates do go down, I think there's a good likelihood that they will. But I can't guarantee that. But if those rates do go down, then you can take advantage, refinance it, lock in that lower rate, and then you get the best of both worlds. If you sit and wait, hoping that the market's going to go down again, and then interest rates go down and you decide to jump because interest rates go down, the likelihood is there's going to be significantly more competition for you. It's going to be much harder to get the house that you really want. So take advantage. Thank you.